I guess we can. All right. Anything else? You know what, and, and it's, you know, it's real easy this week, next week. I mean, we, we skip that cup of coffee at the drive through or uh, that, that lunch we could pack. I mean, it's, you know, we can, we can come up with $20, $25 easy a piece if we just, you know, try halfway. So, uh, you certainly want to be a blessing of those two things that were mentioned already. So, all right, uh, if anybody's got anything else, we'll go ahead and pray. And we'll dive into Revelation 19. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for, God, your goodness. God, we thank you for, God, a cool, brisk morning. God, just to remind us, God, of the change in the seasons. God, how you've got your hand over everything. And, um, God, before uh, we even rolled our clocks back, God, you had, you had things uh, in order for today. And, God, you knew where our, our bodies and our minds would be. God, I pray you'd help us to God, focus on your word this morning, God, in this Sunday school class and, God, the classes that are going on right now. And, God, as we move together uh, into the sanctuary for corporate worship here in just a little bit, God, I pray that uh, your name would be lifted up high, God, because you alone are worthy. And, God, our, uh, our goal is to worship you, and we want to do that through this Sunday school and, God, through our worship time to come. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, certainly, certainly keep these. I've, I got that list from last week too. So, if you got your Bible, open your Bible on it. Uh, turn to Revelation, chapter number nineteen. Oh, that's close. Um, <clears throat> that is Revelation, by the way. I didn't. I was going to say Revelations, but I knew um, somebody in the back would probably uh, correct me on that. So, it is the revelation of Jesus Christ to John. And so keep that in mind that some of you that weren't here last week because we went through chapter 18 and uh, I know Rich went through 17 the week before. So 17 and 18 was dealing with Babylon, uh, uh, also uh, known as uh, the great whore, the Bible says, uh, the harlot. Um, and, and that just represents everything that opposes God, that, that, that central, um, centralized, uh, um, I guess, image of, of, of wealth and economy and religious um, uh, avenues outside of God right here at the end um, of, of Revelation. And so all these things have culminated and uh, live in everything that opposes to the, to, to the Lord. And we see in 17 and 18 uh, that, that Babylon described and then in 18 uh, Babylon destroyed. And uh, and the and the and the people are just are in are in sorrow and, and wailing because they don't have that um, they don't have that Babylon to lean on anymore. So <clears throat> we pick up in uh, and again I know we did read a few verses last week. Um, we read a few verses. We didn't jump into the study, but we're going to jump into that today. Um, we'll kind of break this up into a couple different parts. Um, the first first half and second half of nineteen, but. Uh, Starting in verse 1, uh, and again, keep in mind, this is John seeing things in the future that haven't happened yet. And uh, so he's, he's, uh, he's trying to pin all this down and take it all in. And this is his, this is his reaction, his, his, uh, his perception of, of everything that's happened. In verse 1, And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. We'll keep hearing that, don't we? 
And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, a vo uh, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Verse 9, And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These things are the true sayings of God. And I fell, uh, I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we see, <clears throat> we're going to stop there. That, that'll kind of be the first Half the response to um, the response to Babylon being destroyed, uh, as we see through in, in 17, and then leading into 18, is is we see there is a there's a there's a worship service that's happening. Um, the 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 Alleluia uh, that we keep hearing, and and, and you can read, uh, go back and look. Um, uh, back in chapter four, chapter thirteen, you you hear some of these things, th th same things: glory, uh, salvation, honor, power. Uh, all those things are associated with the praise that was given him earlier in the book of Revelation. But 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 here, this this whole first ten verses of nineteen is is just it's that it's that reaction of worship that 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 Babylon has been destroyed. That this this thing that has worked evil against. The, the body of Christ against the things of the Lord has now been removed. And, and so, uh, again, we, we jumped in um, to, to the, the, the second half of 19 last week just to, just to kind of kind of bring things together, and especially that, that's the part I like a lot. Um, uh, but, but here uh, we see that, that on the first three verses um, that, that there is a, there is a, a rejoicing of Babylon being destroyed, and and in, it's even so much in verse three, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. So, when the Bible says forever and forever, that means it don't stop. So it it, it will it will continue um, forever and ever, and uh, that means her destruction was great. Then we see verse four, uh, the the twenty four elders and the four beasts they fell down to worship God, but I I, I want to call to and again keep in keep in mind that this is John just trying I can I can only imagine John he's trying to he's seeing these things he's trying to write them down and it's like you ever get those those things where you're trying to write a phone number down somebody's telling you and they're telling it to you too fast and I'm like uh did I, did I get all that you know I got just I got a feeling he's he's kind of working on that kind of on that kind of uh a uh, pressure and 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 he says uh, the voice out of the throne, praise our God. He's here, there's praise. And in verse 6, I heard, as it were, a great multitude, a voice of many waters, a voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God, God omnipotent reigneth. That, that, that's a song. That is a song of, of, of the redeemed. That's a song of, of those four and twenty elders and the, and the four boys. That's a song of, of the, the, the people of the Lord, the creatures of the Lord, giving praise and honor to the Lord because he's worthy. And and that's that's the theme that we see here in this first half, and then and it started in verse seven. It starts to talk about the marriage supper of the lamb, and or the marriage of the lamb, the marriage supper of the lamb, and and the, the there's a song, and I should have got Jason. Jason probably can pull it up. Casting crowns. Um, um, I, I remember the name of it in just a minute. Um, maybe we can play that at the end because I think it's 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 a beautiful. Kind of picture of, of these first uh, of the, or these these second half of these first, first ten verses talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb, but but we understand that Jesus is is the groom, okay? Um, we are the bride of Christ, and and he is he has made uh, made it available uh, that we would be adorned in fine and, and white linen. The Bible says uh, in um, there in verse. Uh, 
8, and, it was, and, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So the, the, the idea that we would be able to uh, stand before the bride, or, or before the groom, which is Jesus, us as the bride in white, now, the, 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 we've kind of gotten away from this in, in, in modern times, but, but the idea of the picture was a bride would, would stand on a wedding day right on because she was pure in front of the groom. She, she, she had kept herself for, for the groom. That was, that was tradition, and for the longest time that was it. Now it's just, it's just, a, it's just a, a kind of a, an over, oversight, but... This is the picture, is that, that we would be able to stand in front of Jesus at the marriage supper of the Lamb wearing white, and we have no right to. We have absolutely no right. We have none of the qualifications. We meet none of the standards to be, to be wearing fine white linen before our groom, which is Jesus. But because of his work, because of what he done, he's done, and because of the righteousness of the saints, which is only through the sacrifice that he made on Calvary, that's why the, the bride is standing there in white. That's why we're able to wear uh, white. It says uh, in verse 9, And he said unto me, Write, he's talking about, <clears throat> John's talking about the, the, the angel, um, who's, who's, who's given this revelation. He said, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. He saith, These are the true sayings of God. And so John has seen all this, and, and John's reaction is, in verse 10, I fell at his feet to worship him. Talking about the angel. And the angel's response is what? Bring it on? No. He said unto me, See thou do it not. He said, Uh-uh, don't do that. Don't, don't worship me. Don't, don't, don't you dare worship me. He said, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. He said, I, I, me and you are on the same level. Then he said, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That is the theme for chapter 19. Worship God. That is the theme for chapter 18 and 17 and 20, 21, 22. And that's the theme for the whole Bible is those two words, worship God. And everything that we see up until this point is pointing to that fact. Those that did not worship God, those, that Babylon that came up, that, that, that was, that was uh, represented in, in, in the wealth and prosperity of the world, was re represented in the religious institutions uh, of the world that was re represented in um, the, the beast and the false prophet. Hey, that, they didn't worship God. And, and, and there will be judgment, and we're about to read exactly how, how open that judgment is. In verse 11, it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Right, let, me, let, me start, let me start over. Sometimes I'm guilty, maybe you aren't, I'm, I'm guilty of this, is I read the Bible with, with the, the incorrect emotion. All right, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't read it right. I'm, I'm going to try that again. Because these, these are all living text. And so if we were, imagine reading a story to your kid at bedtime. All right? You know, especially when they're little, you want to, you put the inflections in there and you make it fun for them and you make it, you know, captivating and, um, Oh, I like the lady uh, that read her kid that honky donkey, uh, whatever, uh, winky wonky donkey book. You know, she she got so tickled to her inflection. She you know the whole video went viral. But but there is a emphasis put on how you read that. And so, um, so let me let me try that again. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful. And true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. 
And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Wow. Wow. Jesus rolls onto the scene, like I, like I mentioned last week, not as a lamb like he came the first time. He is, he is rolling in like a... A, a righteous judge, like a lion. You know what's they'll say about spring? Uh, um, in like a lion, out like a lamb, or something. You know, one of those things. That, I don't know, something like that. that, that hey, he may come in like a lamb, he didn't, can't come in back like one. He comes in with with this this just statement of holiness and and righteous judgment. And I think that's important that we, we have to understand that sometimes and I again, I'm I'm speaking from personal experience. I I can only just imagine if if old redneck, you know, B plus student from, from Troop County, uh, Dale gets this. Maybe maybe some of y'all might too, especially the C students from Hogansville. Um, is is if 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 I don't see Jesus in the right in the right way that he is indeed, and I don't see God in the right way, and that he indeed is a righteous judge, that, that he has the right to judge. He, he holds that right. That, that I, I, can, I, can, I can get off on kind of not, not seeing Jesus the right way. I don't, I don't see uh, the Lord in, in the right regard. Is that, that he indeed is given judgment because he is holy, and, and that's the only way it can work. The only way a God can can be a good judge is if he judges. I mean, imagine you go to court and, and, and somebody uh, did something to you, your family, your property, and the judge gets lets the lets the suspect off without any punishment. That guy wouldn't be a good judge. Well, there's got to be some type of punishment for that guy to be a good judge. There has to be some type of punishment. For God to be a good judge, and see, unlike the judges of the earth, Jesus stepped in and said, "Hey, I'm going to take that punishment for you." But see, this is the judgment of those that that said, "I, I don't want it. Jesus. I don't. I don't want you." And and it says that the angel standing in the sun called for the fowls of the earth to come eat up the flesh. Of all those same ones, the same same listing that we heard back in eighteen and seventeen that, that were that were wailing because Babylon was gone are now the ones who are being eaten by the birds. In these last three verses, verse nineteen, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their names excuse me, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. See, this is... This is this is this is bringing it all to a head. This is when 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 they said, "Hey, we're we're going to get together and we're gonna we're gonna try to defeat uh, this this guy and, and this army that we see come on these horses." And it says, with a single swoop, with just just power and judgment, Jesus absolutely annihilates them all. Uh, 
we, we see that, that the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. And, and, I, and the celebration is that evil and, and, and everything that, that Satan has worked towards uh, since the Garden of Eden has, has now been judged. And, 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 and so the, the beast and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and then, then the remnant were slain. Chapter 20 is going to kind of pick up next week uh, where, where what happens after, after all this takes place. But because there'll be one more little brief little little uh, little hoorah for for Satan, but this is this is the judgment of the Lord. Nineteen is is a is a two part uh, worship and then judgment. It's it's worship because God has been faithful to judge like He is is has been from the from the beginning of. Uh, when he created man, he 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 said this is this is this is not good. He 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 made he made Eve, and then in the garden when there was a a fall and, and sin entered, that was when judgment had to take place. And 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 through his son, we were able to escape judgment. Those of us that are believers, but but those that say I do not and, and we, we see that depicted on the trail those that say I do not accept the, the the price and the penalty that Jesus paid on the cross here's the judgment that they will inflict that they that they will be inflicted upon them verse 10 to to to, to kind of sum up where where we are I think here in revelation John tries to worship that angel that showed him all these things that showed him that that, 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 that that finally judgment has come. And the angel's response is, don't, don't do that. But two words, worship God. That, that, that's, that's the book, folks. Uh, Jason, did you find that song? You man. Um, that, that, that's the book. I mean, I, I, hate, I hate to make it so simple and say it's so simple, but that, that's it. From 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 Genesis one one to, to to Revelation twenty two, that that's it. That's the, that's the whole book. And and there is a uh, there is a ton 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 I, I, that you can dig in, um, and 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 study out a lot of what we just read through this morning. I, I would encourage you to understand Revelation. Um, it, it was told to me this way. I got a book that says the key to Revelation. Uh, it's Daniel. Book of Daniel, the key to Revelation. You want to understand Revelation, you, you really got to go back and study Daniel and see. It really unlocks a lot of understanding about, about what you read here. But, but, but going back to that first part, and we'll, we'll wrap up there, is that there was a, there was a Jewish custom that, that there would be celebrations at, um, at, at, at the marriage time. And, and first, there would be a celebration at uh, the bride's home, and the groom would go get the bride and take him back to his home, and the celebration would move there. And that's that's a lot like what we see here. There's there's going to be a celebration here, and it's going to move into that new Jerusalem, and and into and to where we finally are able to step in and and spend eternity, uh, and, and and Satan will be out of the picture, and and all the evil and sin will be will be out of the picture. But but this is that first celebration this marriage supper of the lamb and i think uh this song absolutely summarizes for us our position on the marriage